Ladies and gentlemen, the game of chess has absolutely exploded over the last two years. It's currently November 19, 2022 at the time of recording this video. And you watching this right now would not have been watching this video in 2019. We just weren't on the map. Chess was interesting, but it wasn't popular. And it feels like every day in the chess world, something new and exciting happens, especially from 2020 to 2022. And today we saw a photo of Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi playing a chess game. Say, what, Levy? No, no, we didn't. What are you talking about? Check this out. I'm going to let it cover my face because it's that important. There was a photo shoot by Louis Vuitton and uh, a fantastic photographer by the name of Annie Leibovitz. And she put together this photo right here. Look at this. I'm looking at it right now. And you would think that this is just tacky or gimmicky or it's two celebrities that are just out of touch with what chess is really all about. No. They actually, they, they, they found a real game. And in this video, I'm going to show you that real game. The position that you see in that image is the one that you see right here. You can compare it line by line. The only difference is the Louis Vuitton uh, suitcase has more rows, but they set up the position perfectly. It was just kind of an endless chessboard. This is the position. And the reason why they chose that position, well, we're gonna have to take a look, right? Because I, I was wondering. Now, they took a position from a game played between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. Magnus Carlsen is one of the most dominant chess players of all time. People call him the GOAT. I call him the GOAT in question, you know, give it a few more years. Um, and Hikaru Nakamura is one of the most decorated uh, speed chess players in the world, rapid and blitz, but he's also a widely popular streamer. He's got a big YouTube channel and he's probably spearheaded the largest uh, kind of uh, skyrocketing of the popularity of the game, at least in 2020, 2021, 2022, and so on. So fantastic ambassador for the game. And this was a game that they played in 2017. I'm going to show you the game now. And then we'll get to that position. I'll show you how it ended. And we'll have a little chat. So it's fascinating they're being compared to Messi and Ronaldo. Now, who do you think would have a higher rating strength if Messi and Ronaldo actually were to play chess? I'm very curious. So in that game in Stavanger in 2017, Carlsen, who we will say is playing as Ronaldo against Hikaru, who's playing as Messi, that game started with a Sicilian defense, e4, c5, knight f3, looking to play the move d4 and trade, put a knight in the center. This is called the open Sicilian. As you can see, the board is opening up with trades. And this position is known as the Nidorf Sicilian defense. We might have a lot of people watching this from the YouTube algorithm. Nidorf is Miguel Nidorf, very accomplished chess player. A lot of chess openings are named after people, after places. You should start playing chess today. Watch my other videos or watch other YouTubers' videos. Now, h3 is an invitation to play the Adams attack with the move g4. Hikaru here plays something called the Dragondorf. Yes, uh, not the Dragon Dwarf, uh, the Dragondorf. This is the Dragon. This is the Nidorf. So what happens when you combine them? You get a Dragondorf, okay? g3 now from Magnus, looking to put the bishop over here. Both guys are going to be putting their bishops out to that square. That's called Fianchetto. It's an Italian word that means little house. I don't think that's what it means, but I used to teach my students that this is like the little house for the bishop. It might mean, I, I do not know what that means, but you know, uh, maybe you do. Both sides castle now, and we have the following position out of the opening. White has a slight advantage because white has already developed four pieces. Black is still looking for a home for this bishop and now undevelops the knight. So Hikaru is looking to clarify what's going on here in the center of the board. He also wants Magnus to make this trade so that maybe he will get some pressure here on the open B file. Uh, Magnus doesn't do that and instead plays this move B3. The idea of this move is that there is going to be a trade and in the future, this pawn will advance not through the knight because pawns can't do that, but it will be a very strong bolstering of the center, controlling squares that Hikaru would like to go to or Messi. So we have a trade and another trade. So Hikaru trades off a couple of pieces. Why? Why did Hikaru make such a big exchange? In chess, when you are lagging a little bit behind your opponent or you're kind of suffering from a space disadvantage, you want to trade some pieces because the only way to utilize a space advantage is with pieces, right? To put those pieces on squares that will control more space that will then do damage. Well, what happens if, a, if, if you just trade all of a guy's pieces, right? Trades the pieces. You could even argue that here he could have tried to go for this, tried to go for a position with no queens. 
You know, Hikaru chooses not to do that. He plays b6 and bishop to b7. All right, that is his idea here. What does Magnus do? Well, we know Magnus wants to play this. We know Magnus has more space. So we know that Magnus is going to utilize his space advantage by utilizing his pieces. So he puts his knight into the center of the board and then builds behind it with the move c4. So, so far, both guys are implementing a game plan they both want, which is weird. In chess, you're not both supposed to be happy. Uh, so something's got to give. Now, instructive moment here. Why did Hikaru not just immediately kick this knight out? It's a nuisance. And why does the engine give this position such a massive advantage for white? One pawn move in chess can change everything. One step in your life can change everything. Didn't think you'd get philosophical comments five minutes into the video, but if the knight drops back, this pawn is weak. A move ago, that pawn was not weak. It was sufficiently defended. But by doing this, suddenly that pawn is extremely weak. And in a drastic overmeasure, which is the move e6, you have suddenly given yourself an airy position. For example, if you want air in your house, you should open a window. You shouldn't bulldoze a wall, okay? That is sort of what black did, not the window part. And so this pawn is weak forever, not to mention that is checkmate. I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but I'm saying there are problems with black's king. So Hikaru doesn't blunder any of that because then we wouldn't be featuring this game in a Messi versus Ronaldo photo shoot. Uh, C4 played, and now E5. But you said, Levy, you just told me that I don't want to do that because that pawn is weak. No, that was when we attacked the knight. There is a massive difference. We are attacking the queen. So if the queen comes back, this is not hanging. And I can always trade. I can always trade. And if you take with one of the pawns, you block the queen. If you take with the queen, I'm not scared. I attack the queen, and my pawn is sufficiently defended. And your bishop doesn't have x-ray vision. The bishop can't see through a pawn. So the queen goes back to e3, and now Hikaru plays b5, a flank pawn attack targeting white center and looking to instigate a little bit. And now Hikaru takes on c4, rook takes c4, and he plays bishop takes d5. Why does Hikaru trade these pieces off? Because remaining will be knight versus bishop. And here's the thing, bishops are a little bit better than knights. They are longer range, they can see the other side of the board, uh, and that is why they are considered a bit better. The thing about knights that knights can see the whole board. A knight could travel to 64 squares. A bishop can't. A bishop can only travel to 32. It literally is blind to the other 32. So if a knight can stand permanently like this on an opposite color cor uh, square from a bishop comfortably, black is gonna be very happy. But right now white can't do that. Uh, black can't do that because I said comfortably and this is not comfortable. <laughs> the knight will very quickly be removed. Um, but that's the idea. That's why you go for a knight versus bishop position. And if you can block a bishop and fight on the opposite color of the bishop, bishop is just pointless. It's not a good piece. So a5. What does a5 do? It prevents b4. What does preventing b4 do? It enables knight c5. So right now, Hikaru's actually accomplished a whole lot of this in this position. He's got a dark square strategy, which works against the light squared bishop because the light squared bishop can't fight on the dark squares. Now, Magnus, aka Ronaldo, sees a3, b4, right? Because he wants to play b4. He can't do that now because the rook doesn't threaten the knight. So he goes here. His idea is very simple. He's going to kick out Hikaru's knight. Hikaru is like, all right, you want to kick my knight out? F5. I'm going to be aggressive, thrusting my pawns forward at your king. All right, the goat's going at it here. All right. Um, B4. A takes B4. A takes B4. Knight has been booted. Magnus is infiltrating. That pawn on D6 that we talked about a long time ago when Hikaru moved his e-pawn is turning out to be a weakness. But... The way you offset weaknesses in chess, you have a couple of different ways. You can bunker down and defend, or you could do what Hikaru's gonna do in this game. Counterattack, F4, just like in football, all right? You can sit back on your side of the pitch with all your players, or you can have a counterattacking strategy. F4, this pawn is hanging, but the queen is shot. If you move the queen, I'm gonna chop, I'm gonna get in here with my queen, my knight is on the way as well. I've got a lot of support. So instead of that, we have pawn takes F4, and pawn takes F4, infiltration, and scooping up a pawn. Magnus is now up a pawn. Four pawns versus three. Queen and rook very powerful. When this pawn goes, it's going to be a few squares away from becoming a queen itself. And the bishop is activated again. This position is spelling disaster for Hikaru. How is he possibly going to end up in a Louis Vuitton photo shoot by two of the greatest footballers of all time five years later if he doesn't hold this game? All right, if he doesn't hold the draw or if he doesn't win. How is that going to happen? Queen to g5. Activating, now f3 and queen g2 is checkmate. So Magnus slides out of the way, but the bishop is still locked down, but it escapes. Bishop unpinned from the king. Knight f6, here comes the knight. 
Queen e6, repinning the rook, and now the pawn is gonna go. King g7 by Hikaru, unpins himself from the negative situation. Now Magnus can play the move d6 here, an excellent move, because after rook e8, his queen escapes. A few moves ago, Magnus could have considered bringing the queen back for a trade. He would have liked that, because then his pawn would have gone forward, or the bishop would have laser beamed on this diagonal. But he didn't do that. Instead of that, he played rook c7. And this looks like a very direct attack. It does. Rook c7, it looks like Hikaru is on the ropes, fighting for his life. Rope-a-dope as Magnus is throwing the cross, the hook to the body. Rook c7, rook c7, the black king kicks out a window of his castle and runs to h6. But will the king perish there, or will he be safe? And suddenly Magnus realizes, I'm kind of out of options. I don't have anything. Because if I play rook f7, the idea, as we see the evaluation plummet to black side, the idea was not to win the knight. The idea of this whole attack was to get to the king. But you know who's really going to get to whose king? Hikaru's going to get to Magnus's. That's not sufficient defense. The game is over. The king is hunted. That's checkmate. That's checkmate. And rook f2 will also lead to mate. So, black can't... Like, black is going to win the game in a move or two. So white now has to retreat. He retreats. Hikaru bulldozes forward. Rook to a2. Severe pressure on the position. Queen h4 looking to capture this and get in and checkmate. The knight is very powerful. This is on the way as well. The pass pawn suddenly loses a lot of its luster uh, because the attack is just too severe on the white king. So Magnus plays rook to e7. And now, Hikaru, instead of bulldozing and still trying to get in on the first rank, Hikaru here plays a very nice idea, which is this move knight to g4. You say, Levy, why is that a very nice idea? Well, he wants to play knight takes pawn, defended by the rook, threatening the king. However, this is the loss of material. And this is the position that you see. The position from the photo shoot, which I will now pull up once again to remind you. This is it. Go back. In this position, we have a check on h4 attacking the king. And there is nothing better here than to repeat moves by white. The king has no escape. It goes here, check, here. And in chess, when you repeat a position three times, the game ends in a draw. It's just an infinite loop. Now, the interesting thing here is, and by the way, for the chess fans watching, uh, Trying to escape check will lead to checkmate because there is this and the queen and the rook get in. So white has to keep the king defending that pawn and that is why this game ends in a draw. It was a very hard fought game. Magnus had an advantage, but Hikaru counteracted that advantage with swift and forcing counterplay onto Magnus's king. Magnus unable to deal with that defense in the right way ultimately ended up succumbing to the pressure, and Hikaru saved the draw. Just like in football. All right, you're down 1-0 on the 90th minute. It counts. It doesn't matter if you save the game on the 94th minute. It's 1-1. Matches the draw. Not in, like, World Cup, which is coming up. Um, or maybe not. Maybe your World Cup is already over. That's how YouTube works. You might be watching in 2023. Who won the World Cup? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'll know, but, you know, it'll still be fun. Who were you cheering for? What was the highlight of the World Cup? How did your New Year go? Anyway... Ronaldo and Messi played some, uh, shot some wonderful photos on a chessboard. Uh, and uh, the fascinating thing to me here is, why this game? Are they trying to allude to the fact that, like, Carlsen and Hikaru are two of the greatest Goliaths in the world of chess? You know, classical chess used to be kind of like the pinnacle of chess, brilliance, dominance, whatever it might be. And Magnus is the best in all the formats of chess. Rapid, blitz, classical... But in the speed in particular, Hikaru is right up there. He's number one on most days in Rapid and Blitz. These guys are titans of the chess world. And it was interesting to see them getting compared to Ronaldo, who in this case, I guess, was Magnus, and, uh, and Hikaru. Uh, but the debate of the GOAT, I think, is a lot more intense in football. So who, who's winning? Is, it, is, is, is Messi versus Ronaldo the most intense head-to-head -head debate of a GOAT status in any sport? Is it? Because I think in football, it, it must be. Michael Jordan and LeBron James, that debate is not as intense as this one. Because I think the most popular sport in the world is football, and it's not close, right? Um, 
And in many ways, I, I, I wish chess to be as borderless and international as well. And you don't need a high budget to get started with chess. Um, you don't need a high budget to get started in football. You need two posts, whatever you want to put in the ball, right? So, um, yeah, it's uh, fun to watch these two sports unite the world. And uh, just two absolute monster talents and celebrities uh, taking a look at a chessboard and having this reference was so interesting because frequently you see celebrities like posting on their Instagram that they're playing chess and the board is set up wrong. There's two kings. One piece is like inside of the other. Not like that. Uh, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it, but this was like a real thing, which was cool. So credit to uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, credit to the players, uh, the football players, I should say, uh, the chess players for playing that game uh, and to the amazing photographer. So yeah, that's all I have to say. If you're new to chess, you can check out a lot of my beginner chess videos. If you've been at my channel for a while, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, World Cup starts quite soon if you get to catch this in 2022 in November. Get out of here.